Here, I'm fine. Say sometimes that women who older when men are still more... Well, older men uh, a lot of times get uh, chilly, too. Yeah. Dan's got a coat on. He's got a coat on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you don't have a coat, so I'm no. wondering what's <laughs> different. That's true, man. I had it all a lot lower than I did in the summertime, but uh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I managed to get stores from Wallow Sound, Radio Shack, High Five House. Okay. I made more money selling shoes when I got into uh, that. What do we mean from today? But, uh, First then that business got lousy and uh, Well, uh, during the years, that was in the 70s and 80s. Oh, okay. And that was the Before they went, well, for sure. When they used to make shoes in the United States. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, some shoes with that kangaroo. It was soft, but very, very tough leather. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's calf skin, which is not split, uh, like cowhide is. Cowhide, the skin is real thick. Uh, it's too thick to make an upper with, so they split it. Okay. And they take it out the, the okay. under layer. Skin is more expensive leather, leather than uh, right. because it, it's not, uh, it doesn't need as much as uh, older cows, but uh, they have scars and uh, all kinds of marks on them. They have to be sanded down before they can be finished. But uh, lots of different things. It's become very, very scarce. Yes, it is. Thank you for starting it off. 
the circle, the red circle. Oh, okay. I'll send you a bill for it. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> it should stay red when at all possible. Every, every, almost like every 24, 30 hours, it's going to be restarted. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Well, there's a big problem. We need a computer. Have a, no.
Well, 500, 500, and that's from Joey Walnut of Florida. Trust and obey. Take 
page 67 today. Uh, you got some back there? Everybody got one? Dan and Tammy got one? I mean, uh, Thank you very much. We can share. Thank you. Okay, I have to get some more printed up. Okay. Thank you. We're on page 67. All right, Revelation 19, 11 to 16. And I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in leather. And I invite him to me. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's his whole line. You must be remembered that. Yes, hi, John. What's up? Yes, good morning. Say hi to everybody. And hi. 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 And what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the verse say? Uh, oh, we're trying. Verse 6? Well, that's where we start. All right. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had worshipped the beast. Neither his image, which did not worship the beast, neither his image, they had received the mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 20. 7 to 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and they shall go out to the sea of the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. God and may God will gather them together to battle, the number of whom was the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints above, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right. First Corinthians chapter eight, again in verse five today. I want to welcome those who listen to us by the internet. Give us a call if you wish at eight five six two six one nine zero one eight, or give us an email. Questions at bftpc.org. Glad to hear from you. Just ask a question. Just say hello. Glad to hear from you. Let's read First Corinthians eight, verses five, six, and seven together, beginning in verse five. For though there be that are all gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, 
of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Albeit there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol and the hour of eat, and it is being offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. All right, verse number five. Some that are called gods. What do you think that refers to? The, the false. Uh, would that be the, the some that are called gods? Would that be the false? false yes, gods? false gods. What is their form usually? What do they look like? Yes, it is. Well, they're in some type of image. Usually, it's an image of a, of a recognizable form or some type of creature, whether it's right. a human okay. being, an animal, or some type of form of. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's got some type of form to it, in the form of an idol, in the context of, All right. of chapter eight here. Yeah, Bill. Uh, another false god lookalike is Mike Murdoch on television. I see. He's a human false god, huh? Yeah. All right. So some are animate, some are inanimate. Uh, but the idol is something people worship. That could be a yeah. man or a woman or a boy or a girl or an idol of. Stone or brick or wood. So there's some gods, many, as it says in verse number five, uh, that are called gods. Now it says whether in heaven or in earth. What does that mean? It has a time. It can either be in heaven or in earth. All right. Uh, in other words, yeah, that's an end. Oh, you finish your thoughts with that. In other words, what would the gods in heaven be? Or Tepeshadana, to see whose hand it was. Acts on Mars Hill, mm-hmm. um, you know, all these, all these, this thing, this one idol of the Mars Hill, it's just unknown gods, the Greeks, and these these gods, they would worship the planets. All right. Mars, and yes. Jupiter, and Pluto, all these different celestial beings are all, and even our mm-hmm. days of our week, the days, you know, they're, they're all related to paganism. Paganism. So, oh, wait, no, I got it backwards. Mm-hmm. So we had, we had earthly gods, and the planets were named after the gods, but still, mm-hmm. I guess I forgot that detailed history. Yeah, but you want to explain that? No, I'm sorry. I <laughs> no. no, no, that's a good, that's a very good point. So you, but the fact that we had these earthly gods, and then we, we even think to this day, we, they retain their, even though there may not be a, a earthly god as prominent as... Mars, or whoever it might be, but still, they, they held their name in the plants for 2,000 years. All right. So, are these gods that are mentioned here real or unreal? Yeah, so. I mean, you have, you have people, you have the, uh, the moon god Allah, I, you know, all these different things connected to the moon. You know, I think Allah is supposed to be some type of moon god or whatever his name is. Uh, uh, is that correct? I'm not sure. Is, that, is it the moon of dollars or is it something else? I don't know. Time. Well, I'm thinking of uh, Job chapter 1, uh, where the, the sons of God mm-hmm. came before um, the Lord and, and they asked if they could, uh, <laughs> they could, they could tempt Job. And um, so they were in heaven at the time. Mm-hmm. So. Right, so Other good. times we know in, in Genesis 6 they were on earth. Mm-hmm. Like when we're talking about actually demons. Yes. The Diana. Well, so I have me thinking. So a lot of these different different gods, like you have the, the god of thunder or the, the god of the sea or, or the god of um, this or that. Mm-hmm. Um, although it's similar to how some, the institution of Rome has. The, the saint of this or the saint of yes. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so, so they have these different gods, these different things. But God, the the true God, he he's God of everything. Mm-hmm. Like he he doesn't like he he can do it all. He he doesn't it's like he can do the lightning and the thunder and the control mm-hmm. the sea and control mm-hmm. the air and control, like everything. He, he doesn't need to be divided up into little chunks. Now, he may delegate certain things to angels, but ultimately he has 
the ultimate mm-hmm. control. But if we start to look at just one, like that's sort of where I think is, I don't know, this I could be off, but like there's different um, demons that control things, and there's angels that control things, and and then when but when we focus on the one thing, then we're essentially worshiping the angel or demon instead of worshiping God. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that. What is the big fancy name for calling things that are many, many gods? What's a fancy name for that? Yesterday? Holly. Holly. And what's the fancy name for those just one god? Monotheism. Monotheism. But yeah, Anna. And then there's also pantheism. With what to describe pantheism? Everything. Everything. God is this God. chair or yeah. this pen. Everything or this. Yeah. Now, which, is the, which is the correct fact that we believe? Which of those three? Monotheism. Monotheism. That's right. Not pantheism or what's the other one? Polytheism. Polytheism. Right. So <clears throat> this, this is talking about that. Though there be God's many in heaven and earth, as there be God's many and Lord's many. But in verse 6, there's the word but. What is that used for? And what's the significance here in verse number 6? The hands on that. That Danny. It shows contrast. Contrast. And the contrast to Anna. Oh, I wanted to go back to verse 5 and point out, right. there, uh, though there be that are called gods. So yes. people might call things a god, but it's not. It's not. They're not God. They're not God. They may call. That's right. Uh, and then in verse 6, what is the contrast, this word but, to us? Who's the us referring to? Well, the contrast is that there's just one God mm-hmm. as opposed to many gods. And who is the us? That's all born-again Christians. Born-again Christians. Genuine Christians have a different outlook why do they have a different outlook? Uh, what is that outlook based? Any hands on it? It's on scripture. It's, on, it's based on scripture, that's right. And if we believe the scripture, we've got a different uh, basis than these people that have no scripture, they just make up in their own minds what they think is a God or not. We're based on scripture, but to us, those are genuine Christians, there is but how many gods? One. There's one God. And how many persons does this one God have? Three. And what other persons? Father, Son, Father, Son, Son, Son Holy Spirit. Spirit. Those Spirit. are the that's the Trinity, is the Trinity. <clears throat> and uh, are all persons of the Trinity, all three, deity? Yes, yes. Yes, they are. And uh, we've got to remember that. And what does this last part of verse six mean? We in Him and one Lord Jesus Christ. What does we in Him mean? Yeah? Well, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking oh. about the concept of the Trinity. Oh, go ahead. Um, so I was thinking, well, some people say, oh, you believe in three gods, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's one. That's and right. because He never he never disagreed. It's like, it's a unity, tri unity. There's yes. three persons, but they're always in complete agreement. Whereas if you look at you look at the, the, the pagan uh, the pagan gods like the, you pick pick any three and you're bound to encounter stories of those gods fighting each other yes. having some squabble mm-hmm. that's not true of the Lord God the Trinity Triune God Father Son and Holy, Holy Spirit uh, and so the what does it mean of whom are all things I suppose singular or plural? Yeah, Tammy. He's the creator of all things. All right. And he's also the source of salvation. All right. And he, meaning the triune God, mm-hmm. three persons, is the creator, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They all took part in creation, didn't they? The and let us make man in earth. That's right. Let us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Triune God. And then it says, and we in him, uh, of whom are all things. What does that mean? Of whom, again, we said it before, we review it for us. Of whom are all things. 
Well, that's sort of your question then. As a source of all things, whom is an objective? Case. Case. Right. And so of whom in the singular? The singular. And of whom the triumvirate of the singular is the deity of it. All things. Is that what all things refer to here? What does that mean? It has in it. What are included in all things? The ten? Everything. All right. People, trees, beasts, animals, fish, all of them. Angels. Demons. Demons. All these things were of God. I guess the demons sort of slid off of the... Well, right. But still they were created by God and they fell. Yes. Yes. They were not starting on demons. They were something else, but they fell. Right. That's right. And so all the angels, some fell and some didn't fall. Some are good angels, some are bad angels. That's true. And the angels, the demonic angels, are still under subjection. Yes. Still under subjection by God. That's right. And if they can get away with things, they try to get behind God's back, but they're in control. Yes. It's not behind God. Behind God's back, he allows for certain things. It's like in the book of Job. Yeah. Like Satan could only do certain things. Mm-hmm. So in verse 6, one Lord Jesus Christ. And this is of whom are all things. What does that imply about the Lord Jesus Christ in that verse? And do all people believe it? All pastors believe it? I can't. He's one person. So his humanity and his deity are all in one person, not two separate people like the Gnostics would believe. Right. And by whom are all things? What does that imply? Answer that. By whom are all things? Anna? He was there at the creation of all things. There at the creation. And some of these, by Jesus, all things were created, are removed by these new versions, these pagan versions. They don't believe that he created all of them. Now, by whom are all things? And we, by him. Who do we refer to? We. By him. Hands on that. Who's the we referred to? Starting at Christians. We're getting Christians. Genuine Christians. By whom? We're, we're, we are um, born again. All right. The by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that gave his life. Yeah, Bill. You know, I have a little quote here from Lewis Barry Schaefer mm-hmm. that, that fits this. He said, uh, For in the plan of salvation, God the Father is the source. Christ the channel and the spirit the agent. That's good. So we become Christian, become genuine Christians. And uh, we by him, by the Lord Jesus Christ, we are become genuine Christians. In verse seven, how be it? What does that big word mean? What's the significance of that conjunction? How be it? The hands on that? Damn it. Sort of a, it shows contrast. It's sort of like, however. Yes. That's sort of however. So the contrast. There is not in every man that knowledge. What do you think that refers to? What knowledge? The previous verse. The, the God. The, oh, okay. The God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. Salvation. Yeah. Of whom are all things. No, there's knowledge of creation. Yeah, ten. Well, kind of going back to also verse 5, it's like, um, you know, there's just one God, not mm-hmm. all these many gods mm-hmm. that, you know, verse 5 talks about. Yes. And they don't, everyone doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. Some people worship those gods, mm-hmm. small g. One God in triune fashion, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, triune God. Uh, and so, uh, it says, we and him. One Lord Jesus Christ. In verse, are we in six or seven? Seven. Seven, okay. I'm <laughs> skip right. Out of seven, not in every man that knowledge. <clears throat> now, it talks about a conscience here in verse number seven. How would you define a conscience? What is a conscience? 
own sins, own that fault. Wouldn't that be the vote to intervene, I guess, the cause would be considered the intervene, I guess? It's part of the intervene, that's true, after that. With knowledge. With knowledge. And what does the conscience do? How many people have consciences? Any hands on that? What is it? Well, everyone has a conscience. Everyone has a conscience. But the question is, has it been seared or not? All right. How is our subconsciousness working? How are other consciences working? What is the conscience supposed to do? What does the conscience do in some cases? It's supposed to guide you into what's the right thing to do, what's the wrong thing to do, what is good, what is bad. It's supposed to do that. And the bill and then Tammy. It's supposed to give you empathy towards other people as well. All right. Tammy. It has to be trained by the Word of God. All right. And a lot of people don't have any interest in what the scriptures say. Questions at bftbc.org, rate 56261-9018. Hannah put something to me, Diane put something in there about conscience. You said, I think you said seared. That was Anna. That was Anna. But you said something about conscience. What did you say about it? I just said it's supposed to. Oh, supposed to. It's supposed to guide you. That's right. Now, there's a question about bad consciences, good consciences. What does that mean? What is a conscience that works? What is a conscience that doesn't work? Paul. A bad conscience would be one that is seared. All right. To such a point where they don't know right from wrong. A good conscience would be, in other words, for a guide to know right from wrong. If something is seared like a conscience, what will it do? What is the status of a seared stuff? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's true. And do some people have seared consciences? Yes. Yes, scripture mentions that. Consciences are seared with a hot iron. It says. And so, yeah? I'm sorry. Going back a few verses where it talks about like of, of, like, of and by, like of whom are all things and by whom are all things. It reminded me of this verse in Romans, chapter 11, I'll start in verse 34. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. All right. That's good. Well, the conscience, you can't, I mean, to quote Jiminy Cricket, and always let your conscience be your guide. And you can't really do that if you're, if you're, even if you're born again or not born again. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit will convict your heart. But today's world is situational ethics. So your conscience is not the best guide in today's world because it's what's right for you. That's true. Are there such things as good consciences and bad consciences? How would you define each? Bill. I've watched a lot of shows on television, on Justice Channel mainly, about crime. And in a lot of cases, they have interviews with people who were serial killers or people who would steal from other people. Those people do not have a working conscience. Many of them only go for what they want, what they desire, and have no interest at all in their victims. That's defective conscience. People with consciences, how does a conscience deal? What are the two basic opposite things that consciences do? Two opposite things that we have to have the conscience work on. What is right and what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong. And the conscience, if it's a good conscience, what will it always do? Do what's right. Do what's right. And it won't do what's wrong. So 
That's an important thing. Now, what is the standard of what is right? The scriptures. The scriptures have to be the word of God. Because a lot of things, people say, oh, I think this is right, this is, but it's wrong. The homosexual marriage is for instance. They think this is wonderful, that's right. Pastors, we should go with it. It's got to be based on scripture. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When somebody is saved and they've been living with the mindset of this world, it's not going to be Yes. So it's very good to have, and very important to have, a proper conscience trained and based on the scriptures, the word of God, so we can decide whether we accept it or reject it. Here's David Hall from South Carolina. Let's see what he had to say. Yes, David. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I had a question about this conscience. Um, yeah, I guess there, there, there is a good conscience, there is a bad conscience, but what what is fed to the conscience? Isn't that what makes the difference between the two? You know, if, if you're not studying the Word of God, the real Word of God, and you're not uh, applying it to your life, and you're not reading it constantly, then something else that will fill that void. One, I mean, the world's going to fill that void in conscience. And B, it what um, what the world believes is right and wrong, and then that's not going to marry up with what the Bible says. And so your conscience, as the, as Rebecca said to me, it has to be developed, mm-hmm. and it, depending on what it's developed from, will depend on will determine whether or not it's a godly conscience or whether it's an ungodly conscience. That's well, even before it gets seared. Uh-huh. And I don't mean, correct me if I'm wrong with that, but it's, it's what the conscience is fed, how it's nurtured and nourished to the point where it can decide what's right and wrong. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, David, let's wave to David there in South Carolina. David and Rebecca Howell. Thank you for that comment. Appreciate that. And uh, so in verse number 8, uh, were you an eight yet or still seven? Seven. Or still seven? Yeah, we haven't. We just are starting. We're at the word conscience. Okay, at the word conscience. I'll be there's never, never man. There's not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour. Eat it, a thing offered unto an idol. So here's conscience, idol conscience. Apparently, the first word an idol conscience is what would that mean? An idol conscience. Well, they're they're aware that you know this was meat offered unto an idol, and mm-hmm. so they're they're concerned about you know eating something. They don't they don't understand that there's just one God. Mm-hmm. They're not um, and their their hearts are convicted. All right. And what kind of a conscience is mentioned in verse seven at the end of? It? What's the result of that? Any hands on that? That's your that. A weak conscience. Weak conscience, see? And being weak, what's it, what's it, what's it like? Defiled. Defiled. What defiled means? What does defiled mean? Corrupt. What is it? Corrupt. Corrupt, that's right. Defiled. And, and wicked and dirty and filthy. Defiled. Scripturally and otherwise. So this is important. Uh, conscious of an idol this hour. They don't think anything about it now. They just worship the idol about that. Roman Catholic Church with all the idols and pray for this idol, pray for that idol, pray for Mary and all the saints gathered up and other people. Uh, did we read this to us? 5, 6, and 7. All right, well, let's read 8, 9, and 10 together. But, but me commanded us not to God, for neither are we weak, also the better, Neither if we eat not, are we the worst. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block for them that are weak. 
For if any man see that which is acknowledged to me in the idol temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be a golden tree that he can offer to the of the idol? All right, so verse 8, 9, and 10. What does it mean, meat commendeth us not to God? What does that mean? Meat, yeah, let me tell you. Well, it's, it's referring back to these, this meat that was offered to idols mm-hmm. that was being sold <coughs> and uh, perhaps at a lower price in mm-hmm. the marketplace. And whether they eat it or whether they don't eat it is not does not make them righteous or unrighteous. Mm-hmm. It's not about eating the meat or not eating the meat. It's, mm-hmm. it's about what's going on in the heart. All right. It doesn't have anything to do with commendation by the Lord, for the Lord. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment on these things. So this meat doesn't commend us to God. It doesn't make us good or bad. For, now, in verse 8, there's a contrast. Those that eat, those that eat not. What is the effect of those that either eat or eat not? What effect is it? Good to see you, Ken. You made it. Ah, thank you. Okay. We're in 1 Corinthians okay. chapter 8 at verse 8. 1 Corinthians 8.8. 8. Glad to have you with us. Uh, so, and there is your... Uh, 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 Antoinette? Antoinette, yeah. Antoinette. <laughs> better, we're going to speak one even worse. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8. 8.8. 8. Doesn't make it better or worse those that eat or whether they don't eat. The idols. There's no, there's no plus or minus on that. Uh, we're not the worst, but I think sometimes we are the worst if we, because it could be a contaminated type of uh, offering to idols. First Corinthians 8 and verse 8. Uh, uh, then in verse 9, there's a warning. Again, there's a but. Adversative conjunction. And what are the warnings about? In verse 9, and it has a 1 Corinthians 8, verse 9. What are they warning you? What is Paul warning us about here? Not to be a stumbling block to the weak. All right. And that's uh, stumbling. Your liberty becomes stumbling block for those who are weak. What does take heed mean? Watch out. Be careful. Watch out. Be careful. And uh, Notice. Notice. Very good. That's fine. Your liberty of yours. What does liberty mean in this case or any case? Liberty. Well, could say how we tame it? It's the freedom that they feel that they have in Christ to eat. All right. With this meat that's been offered to idols. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone who is living has liberty, but there's a right way to use liberty and a wrong way to use liberty, all right? If you have liberty to do anything, but you gotta watch what you do because you have liberty. Nobody's checking you down so you can't do anything. You've got to have proper use of liberty for the things of the Lord, the things that are true, and the things that are false. So that's verse 8. We're no better whether they eat, or worse whether they eat not. Uh, it doesn't commend us to God. It's uh, nothing. Then in verse 9, uh, we'll try to verse. But take heed, we said, that liberty doesn't become a Stumbling block to them that are weak. Stumbling block means what? It has a stumbling block. Something that would trip them up in their faith. All right. Make them to fall. If you trip on something, you fall flat on your face or on your back of your head, then they're weak. Uh, then in verse 10, if any man see thee, which has knowledge. What do you think that knowledge would involve? Anybody see thee in the net pan? Going back to the uh, verse five and six, the knowledge that those gods are are not those God, gods, small g, are nothing, mm-hmm. and that there is one but one God, mm-hmm. you know, that triune God, and um, so, so you, you know that the idol's nothing. Yes. And there's there's no reason to be concerned about it, but but they may not understand that. If somebody sees a person that has knowledge of the idol, it's no good, it's, it's evil, it's wrong. Uh, if he sees you at any time eat and sit and meet in the idol's temple, what does that do? It 
causes question also. Causes question. <laughs> Could stumble people. Yeah, Anna. Sorry, I was just sort of scratching. I was saying. Oh, yeah, I've, oh. I've been yelling out. Oh. <laughs> okay, then. Go ahead. Um, it, ca- it puts doubts in their head. The, yes. The, the question of the teacher becomes the doubt of the student. Do I have that verse? Oh. Yes, that's right. <laughs> question of the teacher. Well, I mean, the the, it, it puts doubts in their mind. Right. And that's not helpful in the, in the spirit. What do you think this knowledge is? A person has knowledge sits in an idle thing. What do you think that knowledge is? Should they attend and 
take part in that ministry. Mm -hmm. Would you say both? No. What? Yeah, Hannah. I mean, um, Diane. Uh, no, because but you won't have to tell them because they won't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Because they're not being fed, they're not growing. Mm -hmm. They're seeing things that are unscriptural, and they won't. Yes. And want I'm, to stay yeah, there. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, we're called right. in several places uh, to separate. Yes. Uh, come out from uh, among, among them. Among them. The shepherds. That's, that's right. right. <clears throat> that's that's not what we want to stay them. with a good church mm -hmm. and the fellowship uh, with good Christians. And that's why I, I wonder if mm -hmm. people who know that eating meat offered to idols is bad, know it, know full well this is been offered to idols. Should that be a part of this same group of people that are eating idle meat? No. I don't think they should eat. Uh, come on, it's a separate situation. <coughs> to do so, they say one thing and do another. And that is that <coughs> word H, hypocrisy. Say one thing and do another. Uh, verse 10, uh, <coughs> no doubt, this is written. What is written in verse 10? And what does it mean? It's a parable. What does it mean in verse 10? And what does it mean? Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment. Glad to hear from you. What does this mean? What verse are you in? In verse what, number 10. And what was your question again? What is this verse that says, He that ploweth should plow in hope. He that thresheth in hope should be repeated. Wait a minute. I thought verse 10. I'm in 10. Oh, that's not verse 10. You're, 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 oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Oh, my student. White church, wrong view. Yeah. 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 Right, here's the thing. I don't know what you're, where you are. Verse 10 of okay. chapter 8. First Corinthians chapter 8. Right on the same page. Chapter 8, yeah. verse 10. 8, 10. See in the temple. See that conscious of him which is weak would be emboldened. What does emboldened mean? Encouraged. Encouraged, all right. Encouraged to eat those things which are offered to idols. Should we eat things offered to idols? No. no. If we don't know they're offered to idols, I guess it's hard because we go into a meat store and we don't know whether it's been offered or not offered, but I'm sure some things have been offered to idols are sold on the, on the drug stores or meat stores. So would we refrain from eating meat that was offered to idols because we want, to, we, want to, we want to harm the conscience of those that are weak and those people that are coming out of that environment mm -hmm. we don't want them to go back into that environment. Right, right. Yes, Barbara Lester. Thank you for coming. Hi, everybody. I just called in to say hi and take a good deal. Hi, hi, Barbara. Good. Thank you. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Everybody. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Calling in. We don't want to stumble people. Is it easy or difficult to stumble people? Easy or difficult? It's very easy. Well, it's easy if yeah. you're not being obedient. That's, that's they right. see you and that's, that's right. And sometimes we don't realize we're stumbling people. Am I right? Sometimes we we don't think anything wrong, but it does stumble. We've got to have our minds and our hearts on the scriptures so that we don't stumble. We've got no definition of what stumbling means. What does it mean, by the way, oh, to stumble something? Being a stumbling block. What does that mean, Anna? It's like they're, they're walking. And then, then there's something in their way, but they, they aren't able to step over it, so they sort of mm -hmm. trip over it. Yes. Uh, lots of times we trip and uh, we don't see it, but uh, it trips us up. we got to be very careful. Mm. Chapter 10 of first number, mm -hmm. chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Let's do 10. Go ahead, 10. We get cause an offense in our brother uh, because they're spiritually offended by mm -hmm. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so consequently they... They could end up walking after us in our mm -hmm. error, so we have to be careful. Right. Anyway, now, before, the Lord. before you're a experienced Christian and a growing Christian and a well-taught Christian, is it possible in the early days before you were generally taught that you could have stumbled people without even realizing it? Yes. It's certainly possible. That's right. Yes. You know, when we're first going in the, in the Lord, we don't know what's good and what's bad. We have to try the Scripture and learn the Scripture. So doing some things or saying some things, we may stumble. Yeah, Bill. 
Yeah, in uh, the early uh, stages of learning uh, uh, the Bible, it's very easy uh, to say something which is wrong. You may have every uh, intention which is good, Mm -hmm. but it's very easy to say a lot of things that are wrong, and that can throw somebody else off. Yes. For instance, when I was first saved, age 16, by the the ministry of Uncle Charlie Allen, the janitor sitting in the room and so on, I had a dance band, 15-piece dance band, see? I I didn't know anything about it. You think about it, all of a sudden, I got out of there. It's a mess. (laughs) But it takes a time sometimes to learn what you should be part of and what you shouldn't be part of. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and even people who have been in the Lord for a long time, when they walk according to the flesh, they get some people all the time. Right. It takes a while to be mature and understand these things. Yes, Tad. Anna. Um, uh, I'm just going to read these verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So later on in the book, uh, I'll start in verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Mm-hmm. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's well. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, moving on. We didn't read 11 yet, did we? So what are we talking about? 1 Corinthians 9, 8, 11. Oh, let's just read 11, 12, and 13 together. And through thy knowledge shall we, we but to perish for whom Christ died. But when he sinned so against the brethren, and who in their weak conscience, he sinned against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. Is there a problem back there? No, she's just kidding. Oh. She's using the equipment. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't do it. Okay. Well, if we're just there quiet by this, but all right. So that's a very good verse there to pay attention to. And uh, the through thy knowledge, knowledge about what? It's too loud. Right. Too loud. Okay. And it will fix it for you. Okay. Testing, testing. Is that better? Talk, talk. Talk, say something. Hello. No, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me all right? Is it you hear me, Eva? I'm sorry to make such a commotion. Is it, is it too loud? Is it too loud? Is it too loud? No, no. Okay, okay it's good. perfect. Good. It says in verse 11, Through thy knowledge, who's the thy refer to? It's comfort yourself. What's, who's the thy refer to? It's the person. Which person? What kind of person? Thy the knowledge. Believer. A believer. A believer. Oh, the genuine Christian. And what's it mean through thy knowledge? Knowledge about what? What's right and wrong. What's right and wrong is part of it. What type of right and wrong is mentioned in this context? That's correct. What's, what what's chapter do you have? Chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 11. Uh, Tammy. Um, going back to this question about knowledge, mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like we, we learned something in five, verses 5 and 6, but also in verse 1, that snatching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Mm-hmm. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. So if we're acting in love, then we're not going to be seen to do anything that might be seen as questionable or, you know, cause someone else to possibly mm-hmm. stumble. And first part of verse 11, where it says, And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish. What type of knowledge? What is the subject of this particular knowledge in this context? Knowledge Sal- about what? Salvation? Would be salvation, but in this context, what do you think would be a knowledge? About the idols. About idols, about the idols, see. These are about idols. And you have knowledge about the idols are wrong. See, if, thumb, if somebody doesn't know that the meat's offered to idols, doesn't know anything about idols, <laughs> they just go ahead and eat like a Plato, see. But if you have knowledge and you can see underneath the covers of things underneath, and then you know you shouldn't do that. And the weak brother, how would you define a weak brother? By the way, what brother is this? 
that food Yes. In this sense, it's a, yes. it's a, what does it mean? A brother. A believer. A believer, can't Let's in verse 7, how be it there is not in every man that knowledge. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the verse, um, his conscience being weak is defiled. So okay. those that don't have the knowledge uh-huh. of the, the idol being nothing. Yes. Uh, the brother or sister, if each of gender Christian people, through thy knowledge, shall the weak. What would a weak Christian be? What are a week? Any hands on that? I can't. It's on We're on verse 11. I First find Corinthians 8, 8, 11. 8, 11. What would that weak brother or sister be? What does that mean? Yeah, Someone yeah. who doesn't know as much in their, about the scriptures right. who has a young in their spiritual walk mm-hmm. and who doesn't understand they, ha- they haven't studied as much. They mm-hmm. haven't learned as much. The Holy Spirit hasn't taught them and opened their mm-hmm. eyes, as, or they haven't let mm-hmm. that happen yet. They're just young. Mm-hmm. They're weak. Does this refer to muscles? Weak? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spiritual <laughs> muscles. Yes. But does this context re- refer to muscles? Well, they got enough strength. Spiritual muscles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Figurative muscles, but not literal muscles. Right. By going into, but Spiritual. the weak growth. Doing weight training. <laughs> what is it? Spiritual muscles. Spiritual <laughs> muscles, okay. Uh, a weak brother, a weak brother, one that's not strong in the things of the Lord, the knowledge of the Word of God, uh, wound their weak conscience. Well, it's true if that's the case. They wound the conscience of a weak spiritual Christian, one that's not. Uh, what is, what's, what's the case? They sin against Christ. Sin against Christ. In other words, he is the master. He is the one in charge of all people. Twelve. Verse. 11. I don't even know what chapter we're in. Well, well, yeah, that's true. But in verse 11, so it's a question. You're you're, 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 you're talking about weak brethren for whom Christ died. Now, what does that mean, for whom Christ died? Thank you. What does that mean? Any hands on that? Weak brother, he's a genuine Christian, for whom Christ died. Yeah. And the person is saved. The person they're is saved. Christian, All right. But, but they're they're being offended. All right. And, and stumbling. Did Christ die only for the genuine Christians? No, for all. No, people. for all people. Does that make all people genuine Christians? No. Because he died for them? No. What is necessary to become a genuine Christian? To know you're a sinner in need of a savior. And, and, and to accept Jesus Christ yes. as uh, finished work on the cross, and that's good. And, go ahead. and, <laughs> and to believe in Christ alone and nothing else. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between provision and possession? Provision and possession. In the case of the Lord. In the case of salvation. Provision is something that's it's there for you, uh-huh. but it doesn't become a real possession, possession. for you unless you possess it. Uh-huh. Trust so you, Christ. In right. That's right. And it's wonderful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wanted to add to what Diane said. We also have to repent yeah, so to I be left saved. That out. Big one. <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking. Huge. Thank you. And I yeah. didn't believe that. I know. Because no. you can accept Christ. And read your Bible and go to church on Sunday, but until you really actually repent of That's your right. sin, yes. you're not truly saved. Now let me ask you a question. Does, right. does, Thank you. Does, Amen. does John 3.16 say anything about the need for repentance before you receive everlasting life? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? John 3.16. See, a lot of people have repentance, but... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a change of mind. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily change of behavior. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the behaviors don't follow immediately. Yes. But, well, if, the, but if you change your mind and you know that you're a sinner, yes. then there's where repentance lies. Because if if you realize that you're a sinner and that you need a savior, then your your mind it has been changed, mm-hmm. and you, you're trusting him. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, but see, the thing about it is, their, their whole 
group of Christian churches that teach you had to have two things to be saved. Repentance and genuine faith in Christ. Now, I say, does John 3.16 say anything about repentance? Now, if it means to change your mind, realize you're a sinner and you trust Christ, but I mean to just say that word, repentance, see? To say repent and be saved. See, that's the question I ask. Uh, we do change our mind, but the if we have genuine faith in Christ and don't have the belief that you're repentant, are you lost or can you still have everlasting life? Of course, John 3.16. You have Bill and Tammy. In order to believe uh, that Jesus Christ is the Savior, uh, you must move from a, a mind that it was unrepentant, uh, who accepted sin uh, as normal part of life. When you become a believer, that becoming a believer, even though we're not using the word repent, the action is there. What does repent mean? Let me get the record. Turn away. Turn around. Yes, Rebecca from South Carolina, go right ahead. I am calling to say hi to everybody and. Um, I just wanted to offer a contribution about the repentance and the faith issue, and I completely um, believe what Tammy is saying, that step one of the plan of salvation is when you realize in your heart that you're a sinner who belongs to God, you're going to have a change of mind towards God and about yourself. And when you realize you're a sinner, and you realize that you're headed for hell, that you're going to have a change of mind and be repentful for your current identity. And so repentance is the prerequisite for, you know, John 3, 15, believing. It, it, it's bound up in it in the sense that you can't come to a true belief, a hard belief, in accepting the Lord in your favor without truthfully, you know, turning, having a turn of mind um, and, and understanding uh, your state before a holy God. So, but I agree with you, Pastor Wade, if there, if there are a whole bunch of Christians out there that think they must do the work of repentance, and you've got to work out repentance, and then come and believe, that that is totally um, not right. And David is being in the scripture, Luke 15, 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, and over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So we want to offer that. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's way to... Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca, Rebecca oh. Powell. That's right. Thank you very much. Season. That's good. Repentance, repent, means to change your mind. There's no question about it. You have to change your mind about you know, what you know, the Bible teaches and various other things. Uh, but there's a there's a big group of people that are... This they re redefine repentance into some type of a works or change. So we've got to be careful. She says that very well. Yes, uh, uh, I mean, uh, and, you also and, have and, yeah. You also have to be careful though that um, the the person that you're witnessing to or that you're uh, friendly with and you're trying to show them about the Lord that they the other flip side of that is they oh yes I believe yes I believe I mean the thief on the cross repented it doesn't say that. But the Lord knew his heart. See, the Lord knows our hearts. He knows if we if we have turned. He knows. We can't fool him. The thief of the cross, the Lord said to him, This day thou sh you shall be with me in paradise. So the Lord knows. We don't, but the Lord knows. Um, I was going to ask you, but Matt and I are always going to talk about Matt and Because it's change your mind. Now, yes. Every time repentance is used, in the New Testament, is it always the same? No, I think it it's is. Always, I'm not positive. So it, but, but probably those that promote lordship salvation, mm -hmm. they they take that word and they misdirect it yes. that somehow there's a change of behavior. Yeah. Now, a lot of times behavior will change, but sometimes it takes a while, takes a while. because uh, people have things, sins that they struggle with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, Sam. Yes, Rob, go right ahead. Enter in. 
from Chicago. Thank you for having everyone. Hello. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about share something personal. When mm-hmm. I was given the uh, four spiritual laws on the Ocean City Boardwalk mm-hmm. by a woman by the name of Nancy Lee Dumas, mm-hmm. she ministered to me. And I remember I said to her, does this mean I can't go to parties anymore? And I remember she said, it's not that you can't go to parties anymore. It's that God will change your heart. Yeah. Yes. Which eventually happened. It yeah. took time. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Change your heart and change your mind. Metanoia, change the mind. Heart goes with the mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So on verse 11 of this, um, shall this weak brother perish? Is is he perishing as in dying in this world because he sinned so grievously that the Lord takes him home? Or, I mean, because how could he be called a brother if he's not saved? I believe this perish would refer to shall he not... uh, do what's right and follow the Lord. Uh, I don't think it means he loses salvation. I don't believe no, that's scripture. Not, yeah, no. But shall he perish? In other words, not do what's right, the things of the Lord, through practice. No, I was, I was saying die is in, like, the Lord yeah, takes I don't think that means, I think it means not fulfilling the proper things of scripture. If they could perish someday, that shall not perish, it means go to hell. But I think this perish. Well, I wasn't referring to hell. No, no. I think this particular perish is shall he be stumbled or hurt or weakened or something like that because okay so it wouldn't be, wouldn't be physical the sin and the physical death type of thing no, I don't believe so I mean could, it's possible couldn't it be that someone else could stumble someone up so that they would I mean but then then it wouldn't be a willful sin so much well yeah so it's a, it's a difficult thing to, to cope with but let's see Barbara a minute yes Barbara go ahead what you got
government Christ died, let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that did these things, servant Christ, is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. For we destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth his <coughs> sin. Uh, it is fit either to eat flesh or to drink wine or anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned. And if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. This kind of just boils down to in one serve one another. Right. And that we are to build each other up and edify each other up in the most holy thing. Right. Thank, thank you, Barbara. I appreciate that. Let's wave to Barbara and Master right here in New Jersey. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, yeah, Paul. Yeah, my, uh, you keep an eye on my bus code there. Okay. 245. 245, all right. But the estimate 254 now, the estimate 254. Oh, that's about five or six minutes more. No, it's still have eyes in the back of his head. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right, so uh, we, we... I have a real-life example that yeah, Reggie just shared with me. Yes. The eating of pork. Uh -huh. That is, if you have anyone that you rub shoulders with who mm -hmm. are Jewish, they, mm -hmm. they, their eyes are not open towards Jesus Christ. They are, right. they are not. But if you cater a luncheon and you bring it in and they're there mm -hmm. and you have pork in there, that's very, at least the Jewish people that I know, that's very offensive to them. Yes. I can sit there and chew on a, a piece of pig and yeah. bacon. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I can do that all day long. And yes, that will not affect my salvation. Right. But why do it when yeah. that would be offensive and that would draw him further away from, further away <coughs> for Christians? Right. Bill? I know quite a few Jews who will eat pork Yes. Sometimes they'll eat in secret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they they look around as they're eating it, you know, as if uh, they're wary if other people are judging them. Secret workers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> secret <laughs> workers. That says, well, our time is to the conclusion. But any other comments or questions before we close today? Are all right. If not. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for these different things that we've discussed today. we sorry that there are some weak Christian people. They don't want to seem to get stronger. Help us not to offend them. Sometimes they are offended by things that we may say. But all these things that are mentioned in these verses that we talked about today, give us wisdom and guidance and help us, Lord, to love thee and serve thee acceptably to help our fellow believers in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let me just get Rob one of the next call and we'll close. Rob, right ahead. Hi, Pastor. I just want to comment on uh, Sheldon Wheat Brother Parish. Yes. <coughs> and I think that's an example of what we're talking about. Uh, the Lord has given me the gift of discernment. Yes, I've seen you a long time ago. Yes. 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 Yes.